Hey guys, it's the Russ family. Hope you're doing well. We really miss you and can't wait till we're back in church and can see you all again. See you, see you soon. soon. Hey, hey church, church family. family. We're the Robinsons. We miss everyone and hope that y'all are staying safe. Can't wait to see everyone again. Hi, we're the Wine family. We miss you and we can't wait to see you back in church soon. We love you. Bye. Hello everybody, we're the Godwins. We miss you all and we can't wait to see you back at church. And even though we may not be able to worship under the same roof, we pray for our church family every day. We look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Hey church family, it's the Coburns. We're counting down the days until we can all be back together again. Until then, we'll keep you dancing. Good morning, church family. We hope you enjoyed that special greeting this morning. Happy Easter. Did you know that the season of Easter actually lasts for 50 days? It's not just a one-day celebration. Let's keep celebrating the risen Christ together. We are so honored that you have chosen to worship the Lord with us today. Now it's your turn to greet someone. Drop a comment below and let us know you're worshiping with us. Take just a moment and share this worship service so that someone else might join in. Maybe God is nudging you to reach out to someone later today with a phone call. Make a note of someone now to call and catch up later after the service. Take 30 seconds and greet someone this morning. Show us your glory, show 
up the floodgates Almighty river Flowing from your heart Filling every part of our prayers Open up the heavens We want to see you Open up the floodgates Almighty river Flowing from your heart In just a few moments, we're going to pray together. If you'd like to share a prayer request with us, you can always send us a private message on Facebook or visit our website and click on the prayer tab. Our website is the best way to connect with Orange Beach United Methodist Church and to stay up to date on the most current information regarding ministry opportunities and programming schedules. We're working very hard to creatively continue our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to share the hope of the resurrection each and every day. We would love for you to partner with us by making a financial gift to our church. Giving online through our website is an easy way to make a financial contribution to support the ministries of our church. You can also mail a check to the church or drop your donation off at the church office. We believe that tithing and sacrificial giving are acts of faith and show our trust and thanksgiving in what God has done for us through Jesus. As you give to our church, know that you are making a difference in our world to offer hope and love on behalf of Jesus Christ. As we join together in prayer, we offer the prayers and praises of our hearts to the God who created, redeems, and sustains us. We offer ourselves to God in prayer, trusting that God is ever more ready to listen, even than we are to pray. Let us pray together. O God of the universe, you who created all that is, who knit us together in our mother's wombs, God, we give you thanks for this day and the gift of technology through which we can come together with our church family and with strangers to connect with you and to connect with one another. We offer you our worship, for you alone are worthy of our praise, O God. And Lord, we lift to you those who we have named in our hearts, who are struggling today, those who are facing illness, those who are facing surgery or tests, 
those who are facing difficulty with broken or strained relationships. Lord, our world seems upside down right now, and we need your help more than ever. Help us to lean on you. Give us your grace to take the next right step and to do the thing that you are calling us to do right now. Lord, as we walk in faith, we know that you surround us with your ever-present love. Guide and direct our steps, that as we follow you, we might serve our neighbor in the process. Lord, thank you for all that you have done through, through Jesus on our behalf. And it is in the precious name of Jesus that we pray, as he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Shalom. Welcome to our services today. I don't know if you've ever heard that word before. It's a Hebrew word. It's a actually one of my favorite Hebrew words. Honestly, it's one of the few Hebrew words that I know. But it's just a cool word, and, and it means peace, but it's, it's more than that. In fact, oftentimes it's used as a greeting, and it means peace be upon you. And that just feels good, doesn't it? And I mean, in fact, the word shalom just, just sounds comforting. It sounds good. It's a cool word. Why don't, why don't you just share that greeting with somebody in the room with you right now? And if you're there by yourself, ah, what the heck? Share it with yourself. Let's do it together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Shalom. Peace be upon you. You know, that's what, what Jesus himself wants for us. In John's gospel, John chapter 14, as Jesus is getting ready to leave his disciples, he's going to get arrested in just a few hours. Um, he says, my peace, I leave you. I want to give you my sense of shalom, 
Now, we need to know that's so much more than an absence of conflict because Jesus is getting ready to enter serious conflict. In fact, shalom has so much more to do with being at peace, being with, with yourself, with God, with others, with, with all of creation. It has a sense of wholeness and completeness, a sense of harmony, a sense of, well, balance, if you will. That's what God wants for us, for you and for me. I don't know about you, but but for me, balance is something that's kind of hard to attain, well, even in the best of times. But throw in the coronavirus? <laughs> well, all bets are off. How do we find that sense of shalom, that sense of completeness, that sense of harmony, that sense of balance in today's world with all the craziness that's happening? Now, see, I believe it's there for us, and I believe God wants us to walk in that. And so for the next three weeks, we're going to wrestle with how do we really begin to live out a sense of shalom in the midst of all that's happening? And how do we as followers of Christ find that strength that God wants to give us to find that shalom for all of us and to share that then with others? And we're going to be looking at three different areas of our life, kind of looking at our life from three different angles, mind, body, and spirit. And they're going to be all coinciding and kind of crashing into each other because we just have one life, but we're going to look at it from three different angles. And so today, we're going to look at shalom through the lens or the angle of our mind. How do we find that balance and that peace, that sense of completeness in today's world? in our mind. Now to help us with that, I have a good friend of mine, Dr. Don Winslet, and so I'm excited to have him here sharing some time with all of us today. So Don, welcome. I mean, I'm so glad you've taken some time to be here. We are, we are the six feet apart, and we are. uh, we're going to be staying safe with that, so thank you for coming out. Um, 38 years in practice as a licensed uh, psychologist right. in Pensacola, and you've done a lot of great work, and so Don, I just have one thing to ask you. Fix us, all right? Just, just fix us, all right? Shake your magic dust and do whatever you do. Uh, the April supply of magic dust is gone. <laughs> you need to wait till May. Uh, and there, I'm having to pay a premium for it, okay? So there will be a surcharge. Yeah, yeah get it, get it shipped get here early. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I all do. Right, Good. All right. But we can make it happen. Fair enough. Good. Fair enough. Good. Hey, in all reality, Don, um, so what's happening at your practice? Are you, are you see- what are you seeing nowadays? That's a great question. Um, I think the first thing that I'm trying to do is to help people identify what they have lost. Uh, Everybody is losing something Mm. during this pandemic, uh, from the very wealthiest person to someone who is homeless. Everyone is losing something. And I think it's important that we are able to name our losses and to begin to identify what it is we've lost. I think it's also important that we begin to understand what it means to be empathic, that, that what I'm losing, uh, so far what I'm losing is intangible. I'm losing relationship, I'm losing time with people, I'm losing some freedoms. Uh, and I know there are people who are potentially losing their business and there are millions of people who are losing their jobs. And we need to name what we are losing and go ahead and attach words to that so we can perhaps even um, relieve some of the power of that when we name it. So let me, let me ask a question uh, with that. So when people are coming into your office, um, are they coming in angry? Are they coming in sad? They're coming in more depressed? And then, I mean, you kind of know behind the curtain Here's what everybody's experiencing is right. this loss. I th- we named the loss, and I think also what we're seeing, I know what we're seeing is a tremendous amount of anxiety. Mm. Uh, one of the things we cannot do is we cannot measure anything in my office. Uh, I tell people my cardiologist can measure everything about my heart. He can tell me everything there is to know about my heart, but we cannot measure anxiety. But what I can say is that if someone uh, is dealing with a minimal amount of anxiety, a, a two on a scale of one to ten, is probably a four or five now. Uh, a four is a six or a seven now. A six is a nine or a ten now. And so what's happened is we are people who are grieving. 
we are naming our losses and we're people who are anxious uh, and we're having to deal with the anxiety on top of whatever was happening prior to the onset of the pandemic. And so the anxiety and the grief uh, served to complicate uh, what we were already trying to manage in our lives, uh, in our families, whatever. Uh, and so again, I think it's important, um, I think it's important uh, that we learn something about the need to and the power of lamenting. Mm. Um, we, we know that uh, in, in Scripture, in the Psalms, we know that a third of the Psalms are Psalms of lament, okay? Uh, they don't get preached a lot. Yeah, they're not fun. They're I mean, not fun. Uh, nobody wants to hear them, but they don't get preached a lot. But uh, a psalm of lament that we do know uh, was read millions of times last Friday was Psalm 22, uh, words Jesus used from the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from hearing me from the words of my voice? I cry out by day, but thou dost not answer, and it goes on and on, okay? Yeah. That is a classic psalm of lament. And I think it's okay, I know it's okay, I want it to be okay for people to be able to, to have their own lament, to write their lament, yeah. uh, the complaint it to God, um, what is going on here? Yeah. The, the, what has happened here? This is not predictable. We are not thriving. Uh, you are not the God you said you were, okay? And the second part of lament is to make a request. God, do something. Yeah. Do something. So let's, let's jump back a little bit and talk about this feeling of being forsaken. Because, look, I grew up in church, Don. Um, I was in church before I was born, and <laughs> I haven't left since. And there's almost a sense as a follower of Christ that for me to cry out, God, you have forsaken me. You have messed up. Um, that, that, that's almost anathema. It's almost you can't do that. So then we give that space to Jesus to do it on the cross. So what keeps us from claiming that same space to do it now? I think that is a model for us and a model for us as humans uh, that we are going to be despairing, we are going to be anxious, we're going to be scared. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We are simply modeling those words uh, after Jesus. Yeah. So wh why can't we do that? Yeah. yeah, and that makes God no less God. Absolutely. You know, I think sometimes when God doesn't do what we think he should do, then, then we feel forsaken or we feel like, like God is not right. as powerful as, as he right. ought to be. But it's really not about that at all. It's about our expectations. Right, right. and that's the part of lament that's important, that, that we are able to voice a complaint. We are able to request what we want, and we're able to express trust. And that's in every, in every psalm of lamentation, there is those three pieces, okay? So we can express our trust in God. And I think that's important that we do that. I think it's important that we understand now um, the worst word is never the last word. And as Christian people, we need to understand that the worst word, whatever the worst word is about the coronavirus, the worst word is never the last word. And that's a word of hope. Well, and that's what Easter's all about. And that's what we just got done celebrating. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. In, in, um, in, in God's universe, it's all about endings and beginnings. And right. as humans, we always think that it's all about beginnings and endings. And not, not so for God. For God, it's all about endings and new beginnings. Exactly. All right, so let's, let's, let's step it back a little bit. Um, I walk into your office, um, I'm there with you, we're chatting, I'm anxious, I've got a lot going on, um, I don't know why I just feel so anxious and I'm snippy with my wife and my family and uh, the kids and, and all of this, um, and you're going to begin to direct me to do, to name, right? 
we're going we're gonna to name the loss. We're going to begin to identify the anxiety, and we're going to begin to talk about what it is you're feeling. Let's talk about your anger. Let's talk about your fear. Let's talk about your sadness. Oddly enough, maybe, let's talk about your jealousy mm. because you identify people in your world who are not struggling like you are and you're angry about that, and you're jealous about that. The, the belief is, again, Jim, that if we can begin to talk about it, we begin also to normalize it. If I can say to someone, these are times when your sleep is going to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. These are times when your appetite is going to be disturbed, one way or the other. You're either going to stop eating, or you're going to eat too much, and too much of the wrong thing. Okay. Our vital signs in our office are not blood pressure and temp and pulse and all that. Our vital signs are sleep and food and mood, okay? And in a trauma, and this is a trauma, these three parts of our life are terribly, vitally affected, whether or not we're sleeping well, whether or not we're eating right, and whether or not our mood uh, has some life to it, okay? So we talk about that. The other thing, okay, uh, no one entered into this pandemic free of stress, free of problems, free of difficulties. And so we have all of this added on top of what was already happening, whether they were visiting a mental health practitioner or not, okay. One of the difficulties now is that people, this, this coronavirus is kind of this incredible lightning rod, okay. It distracts us. And so the person who was dealing with the stubborn depression says, I'm going to deal with that later. I don't have the energy to deal with it now. The person who is using too much alcohol says, I can't stop now. I've got to deal with this. And what happens is these are like, ma these are like malignant tumors, okay? And if they're not treated, what happens? It just gets worse and worse, and they get bigger and bigger, okay? Yeah. So the, the, the real difficulty here is that whatever we were dealing with, we need to find a way to keep dealing with it, okay? Yeah. We need to be realizing that we have these issues already. They were in place. We were in process. We need to keep doing this along with everything else that we're now dealing with, okay? Um, we got to talk about suicide, okay? Okay, we know that people are going to think more about suicide in these times, okay? And all I can say to, to someone in my office, all I can say to you or anyone else is, suicide never ends the pain, okay? Suicide transfers the pain. And so if you seriously consider suicide as an option, what you're doing is you're simply transferring all of your pain to those people who love you and care for you. And it's important to remember that. Yeah. You know, um, I, I want to come back to one of the things you said about we need to be able to give voice to these things that are bothering us, um, to our lament. Um, part of me, Don, um, you know, this is going to sound very arrogant, but you know me, so you won't be surprised. Not at all. Not at all. Continue. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's an idea that, you know, I, I need to be able to handle my stuff. And, and sometimes, you, you know, sometimes, man, you just got to fake it until you make it, you know. And when you, when you give it voice, you make it real. And so if you just leave it alone, leave it in the background, it's not as real. And I, I just want to talk about it, Don. I don't want to talk about these laws. I don't want to talk about how I'm feeling. I, I, I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to be a godly man. I'm trying to have faith. And now you want me to come and say, look, I'm afraid we may, I may lose my job. I'm afraid that um, the giving's going to go down at church and I'm going to have to lay people off. And then I, I need to, I mean, I've, then what about my job? And what about our career? What about, I mean. Okay, okay. And what does it mean to be Christian? Mm. Okay, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. Yeah. Okay, and so what is the shortest passage in Scripture? Jesus, Jesus wept. wept. Yeah. Okay. So why can't you? Mm, that's a good word. So why do you have to be different? If you're Christ-like, why do you have to be different? Well, you don't. Yeah. Okay. So if Jesus wept, 
Why can't Jim weep? Okay, or anybody else. Now, in, in some parts of our culture, uh, it's not okay to make oneself vulnerable. To ask for help is not a sign of strength, but a sign of weakness. We, we've got to move past that. And I think we have moved past that in some ways. But there's still people who believe that if, uh, if I deny it, it will go away. No, your grief will be bottled up and internalized and it'll get worse. Your anxiety will get worse. Your depression will get worse. Your fear will get worse. Your sadness will get worse. Consider that they are like tumors. And if they are not treated, they are going to get bigger and they're going to metastasize and they're going to involve other parts of your life. We can guarantee that. Yeah. And if we're going to find a sense of shalom then, what you're telling me is these things that are in our life are, are throwing us out of balance. If you exactly. Will. And so the only way that we can begin to find that real sense of balance is to name that and claim that. And even when, when we feel like maybe God isn't acting the way we think he should act, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right. Um, the only way we can begin to find that shalom, that balance again, is to, is to claim that. Claim that, exactly. So, all right, so. so, you, so go, go ahead. ahead. You claim that with your family. You claim that with your pastor. Okay. I can imagine that if, if everyone made the phone call, you would be on the phone all day, every day, talking with people about these issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because these are real and these are live. And, and we've got to be in a place where we can be open and honest and make ourselves vulnerable and deal with these issues. Well, and that's why the church is so important. And that's why what we do in the communities that we have and having um, fellowship and, and, and knowing one another and knowing each other's spiritual makeup, if you will, that this person is a, is a, is a person of faith and, and they're going to understand me when I say yeah. these things. And yeah, this is part of what the church was built for, yeah. for community. We are relational in nature. That's the way we are created. We are relational in nature and so we are relational in need. They go together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to make this. We're not going to make this work on an island. Yeah. We're only going to make this work in the community. So we've lamented. We've come together. Um, I've got a small group, a couple guys I meet with. We've kicked stones and uh, drank way too much coffee and uh, yeah, and we've kind of just just let it out, you know. And I, I'll be, you know, I've talked about this. Um, I'm I'm lamenting. Uh, I'm going to be a grandfather at the end of April. Um, I will not get to touch my granddaughter for months. I will not get to hold her. I, I don't know when. I will get to see her through glass. And I understand that. That's painful. But that just stinks, Don. That's it painful. just stinks, right? Now, I know people are losing their lives, and, and that's horrific. But we can't compare, right? We cannot compare, and that's the whole point about uh, demonstrating a sense of empathy that I understand something of what, pain that is for you okay and I understand something of the pain that someone feels who's lost a loved one mm -hmm. to this virus okay we're not going to measure loss in intensity and degree we're going to measure loss for what it means to you that's and that's what we have to deal with so we've talked about the loss we've 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 empathized with one another what's our next step well I think I think one of the things that we need to do uh is we need to pay attention to how we are ordering our lives. Uh, you have read, probably all of us have read everything from the CDC to WebMD to Johns Hopkins to insurance companies. And I've, I've probably read 50 articles on how to take care of ourselves during this pandemic, okay? And, and I kind of get the sense that somebody wrote this one template Okay, and everybody took off from this template and everybody's saying the same thing. Okay, and, and what we're being told is um, you have got to practice good self-care. You have got to, whether you're working from home or whatever you're doing, you have got to establish a daily routine. Okay, if you're working from the house and you used to get up at 6 o'clock and have coffee and read the paper, take a shower, eat breakfast, and then leave for work, you do that, okay? You do whatever it is.
to keep you into a routine, okay? You pay attention to what your sleep is like, and you do what you can do. You don't sleep all day because you don't have to work for eight hours because you can't, you don't have that much work, okay? You sleep just like you were sleeping before the world shut down, okay? You eat healthy. You eat clean. I have a rule. If it doesn't rot, don't eat it. Okay. There goes the Twinkies. There we go. I was going to say, you put an apple here and a Twinkie here and come back next week, that apple's pretty gnarly. Okay. Yeah. That Twinkie hadn't changed. Okay. <laughs> if it doesn't rot, True. don't eat it. Okay. Um, we have to get out and move. Yeah. We have to sweat. Okay. Uh, I called you on Saturday to talk about what we were going to do tonight. And you had just come in from a run and you were, you know, you were still breathing hard and all that. And you had been out for a run. And that made me so happy. We need people who are doing that, who are getting out and moving. Okay. Everything I'm reading is saying the same thing. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Keep six feet. New, uh, a routine. Food, sleep, activity. Wash, rinse, repeat. And that's what we keep doing. And we may be doing this into July or August. I don't know. Right. What does it matter? This is a marathon. Okay? You've run marathons. Mm -hmm. This is not a sprint. Yeah. This is a marathon. So I'm lamenting. I have named that which bothers me. I am trying to keep my routine. I am trying to keep my, my spiritual disciplines. Yeah. We're going to talk about that a little more. We're going to talk about the body a little more. But as we said earlier, all these things in our inner interact with each other um, as we do these things then how do I get back in balance back with the sense of completeness and shalom with God because part of me is, is where is God right now because I do not believe Don in the depth of my soul that God has caused this or ordered it or any of that mess now that is right where God was on Good Friday that's right so how do, we, how do we then get reconnected I, I think, in that sense of shalom here? I think that we, uh, we read. We read things that are helpful. Uh, there was an old story about Billy Graham that every morning the first thing Billy Graham did was read five chapters of Proverbs and five Psalms. And when he got to the end of it, he just started over. And that was the first thing he did every morning. Okay. Um, our, our faith has to be a faith of resilience. And the only way for it to be a faith of resilience is if we use it. Yeah. Okay. This is not like a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Okay. And so I think we find times to pray. We find times to listen to music that is soothing. We find times to read. We have conversations with our pastoral leadership. These are the things we do. And that it's important that we do this. So when you, when you talk in the session about care for the soul, uh, if you're not caring for the body and caring for the soul, you're going to have a problem. Right. If you're caring for the body and not caring for the soul, you're going to have a problem. Right. Okay. This is really all joined together. It's yeah. important that we do all. Well, and Paul talks a lot about renewing your mind. Exactly. And, and that's what you're telling us. As we read the scriptures, we are, there's a sense of us reorienting our, our mind around who God is and, and seeing the the, the the, the larger picture of who God is, and it's okay that, that things happen that we don't understand and right. that, that God is still God in those right. moments. Right. I think the, the main thing, I, I want people in the office, uh, I want people to have a sense of hope, okay? Uh, I, I go back time and time again. Uh, there's a, a New England uh, Native American tribe called the Abenakis, the Abenaki Indians, um, and in their language, their word for God translates literally the life in the seed when the seed looks dead. Mm. Let me say that again. The life in the seed when the seed looks dead. Okay? There, that's where God is. Yeah. Okay? And so there are a lot of people, there are a lot of situations where it looks dead okay I'm going to lose this I'm going to lose this I'm going to lose this well God is in that seed that looks dead yeah. and that's the word of hope 
and and that's that's what you need to continue to proclaim and everybody else around you needs to proclaim because that's the word that we need to hear yeah yeah and that's a good word for all of us today and to think about that seed of hope and um what a good word following up easter sunday because that's what it was really all about um and so as we seek this sense of shalom and balance with god and with others um with what's going on in our world we have to hold on to that hope right, right? that's what we have and each other yeah. and the community of faith we are relational in nature, nature. And, relational and relational in need, in need. and we don't we don't need to forget that yeah Good. so when you feel discombobulated friends it doesn't mean that your world is falling apart it means you're alive and well and you're just real these things are happening in our world and our, we can have this sense of shalom with us even in this time of discombobulation because we have that hope that we celebrated just last Sunday with the resurrection of our Savior and we believe and trust that God is still at work in our lives. And that's the hope that we have to hold on to. It is. Even our time is lost. Well, Don, thank you for joining us today. And yeah, elbow, elbow, bump. elbow bump. Good and, to see you, Jim. Uh, we appreciate you as always. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks. We are so excited about this new sermon series, Shalom. Jim and Don have given us a lot to think about this week. Don shared about how to find peace of mind during this challenging time. Here are some questions to help you and your loved ones reflect on what God has for us to learn this week. Number one, read Psalm 22 together. In what ways do you identify with the prayer found there? Number two, when God does not respond as we think he should, it produces anxiety. How do you think God should be responding to this crisis? Number three, read Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. How does this verse help you find shalom in your mind? Number four, lamenting means to speak about your loss with God. Write down your losses because of COVID-19, then say a prayer voicing those losses to the Lord. These, po these questions will be posted to our Facebook page in order to allow you to have more time to reflect. If you'd like to share with us a way in which today's message helps you in your faith, we'd love to hear from you. Please contact us. As we seek God's shalom for our families and our world, we join with God in the work of reconciliation. This week, let us offer our lives as a living sacrifice to the Lord, trusting that God truly causes all things to work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and go in peace. Amen. Have a great week.